noise. Do you ask people to speak louder so you can hear? Do you have to turn your TV, radio louder so that people complain? If yes, you are running into trouble. You may be heading towards hearing loss. Hearing loss usually occurs little by little, but once lost you'll never get it back. There are two kinds of hearing loss. Temporary. It clears up if you're off the job for a while. Permanent. With this you will never get back to normal. Exposure to loud noise for short time can begin damage. A moderate level of noise can cause permanent damage if exposed for longer periods. It happens gradually. Safest limit of noise is 85 decibels, above which hearing protection is required. And above 115 decibels, double protection is required. Earplug and ear muff. You can have your area noise tested if you have doubt. As a rule of the thump, the decibel level could be above the legal limit if you have to raise your voice to be heard one foot away. Other signs are temporary hearing loss, ringing in the ears. Protection against noise. Use quieter equipments. Reduce exposure by sound barriers and regular rotation of workers, different work process etc. Use effective hearing protection when needed. Post signs at noisy areas. When is noise a hazard? Noise is any sound that the human ear finds unpleasing and disruptive to concentration. When annoying sounds become noise hazards is when that noise begins interfering with communication and warning signals on the job and causes chronic health problems. These hazards occur when sounds workers are exposed to a greater than 85 decibels, weighted over an 8-hour shift. To give you an idea of what exactly 85 decibels is, the rustling of leaves is typically 10 decibels, a normal conversation is between 50 to 60 decibels, a chainsaw or drill produces 110 decibels while a jet engine is near the top of end of the scale producing about 140 decibels of sound. Identifying noise hazards. 1. Look for the signs. Look for existing safety signage indicating known noise hazards and the necessity of PPE. Even if a work site is labeled, it still may not be safe. If machinery has been replaced or moved since the signage was put up the noise hazard may be more severe. 2. Shout at an arm's length. The fastest and easiest way to test if there is a potential noise hazard in a specific area of a job site is to have workers stand at an arm's length from each other and have a conversation. If one worker must raise their voice or the other has a difficult time hearing, there is most mostly a noise hazard present. This is the most practical way to keep employees safe, if in that environment they can't hear a conversation at arm's length what are the odds they can hear a cry for help or be heard, themselves. 3. Ringing or humming. If you leave work with any sort of ringing in your ear, have difficulty hearing others or you believe you can still hear machines running, there is likelihood you have suffered temporary hearing damage. You should report this to your supervisor immediately and seek medical attention, if needed. 4. Related health issues. There are a number of other serious health issues that can be directly linked to overexposure of occupational noise hazards. Some related health effects include, a decrease over time in coordination and concentration, sleeping issues and fatigue, and an increase in nervousness and stress which can be the beginning of another set of health problems. If you've experienced any of these due to noisy working conditions, immediately report these health conditions to your supervisor. Eliminating noise hazards. 1. Machine maintenance. The number one cost-effective engineering control used to reduce industrial noise hazards is to make sure that all machinery being used is properly maintained. Machinery where metal-on-metal -metal contact is present should be lubricated regularly. This type of preventative maintenance can extend the life of machinery and save production time from unexpected failures. 
In many cases, low-level noise hazards can be solved altogether with proper machine maintenance, as in this story of one of two limits shifts. Limiting exactly how long workers are exposed to noise hazards is an administrative control that can greatly reduce negative health effects. This can be an alternative to running a costly hearing conservation program for employees. 3. Enclose or isolate the noise. If there are large non-human operated machines in a work area, when possible, move these machines away from workers or into less populated rooms. If moving the machinery isn't an option, an enclosure can be built and appropriately labeled to reduce noise levels. If humans are required as operators, an enclosure with an entrance can be constructed and proper PPE provided. Working in these enclosures may require a shorter shift, if the sound produced inside the enclosure requires it. 4. Properly used PPE. This is the last resort method to deal with the noise hazards. It does not address the problem at the source but acts as a last line of defense for your ears. Proper PPE to protect hearing includes earplugs and earmuffs, often worn together. PPE should be used either in response to low-level noise hazards or as a temporary solution until the source of the noise can be controlled or modified. Please give comment and suggestions. Thank you. Subscribe our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for more updates. Thank for visit our channel. See you next class. Thank you.